Well, welcome. I want to just put together a review for you for the immune system as you build your models and getting ready for um, the other activities you're going to be doing in class. So as you can see here, this is a picture of red blood cells and a white blood cell. Even though the red blood cells do have a bit of a part in the immune system, I'm really going to concentrate on the white blood cells. Now, I'd like to start off by just reminding everybody what an immune system is. It's really the body's defense mechanism. Uh, when there's an organism like a pathogen or a malfunctioning cell or any kind of foreign particles, um, that's considered a breach by our body. And the immune system jumps into action with a variety of different, uh, not only chemicals, but also actions from white blood cells in particular that I'd like to talk to you about today. Well, there are three lines of defense, and uh, we're going to primarily a focus on the second and the third one more than anything else. But uh, it needs to be said that, of course, the first line of defense is our skin. Outside of being dead tissue and kind of providing kind of a tough way to get in because of the way uh, those dead cells are structured, because the first layer is kind of dead, and because of its low pH and, and a chemical called lysozymes, and the sebaceous oils that are there makes it very difficult for some of the invaders or pathogens uh, to get in. Um, but when they do, we have to kind of go to our second line of defense. But before we do that, there is another uh, first line of defense I like to talk about. Is and It's really not pleasant to talk about, but obviously the mucus and cilia uh, that line our throat and navel, or excuse me, uh, nasal cavities. And um, those kind of um, mechanisms kind of, well, for instance, when foreign particles come in, they stick to the mucus. And uh, we will swallow them or cough them up. And the cilia or hair that's in our throats and nasal passages help kind of move them back uh, so that they can be swollen and dealt with. Because, of course, um, the other uh, part of this is, of course, a saliva. Uh, uh, the saliva that lines uh, and mucus that, saline, that lines our throat as well as our na uh, nasal cavities um, also is our pretty good line of defense because they also uh, have chemicals in them. Things like amylase and other things. Um, that make it difficult for bacteria in particular to survive. And of course, as it all kind of collects the foreign material, the bacteria, those kinds of things, it eventually gets swallowed because again, the cilia and the mucus and the saliva all kind of gets pushed down into our stomach. And when it gets pushed down to our stomach, uh, then we have some strong stomach acids that usually help to digest our food but make it very, very difficult, especially in the low pH conditions of the stomach, for those bacteria uh, to uh, thrive at all. Um, so those bacteria help break down the pathogens. If for some reason those pathogens or um, particles get into our, our bloodstream or into our bodies, um, there's a second line of defense. It's called the auto, excuse me, the infl inflammatory response. Uh, typically what happens is when there's any kind of breach in the skin in particular or the tissues if it gets damaged. There's a, a release of histamines, and the histamines uh, allow for the, uh, the capillaries to, to dilate, and then the um, pyrogens uh, then cause, obviously, some pain and heat um, to kind of uh, start the healing process. It also kind of blocks it off or sections it off, so when it sections it off like that, then the white blood cells, particularly these the, um, phagocytes and, the, and other kinds of lymphocytes kind of flock to that area and they start ch chomping away at, at the particles, chomp away at the bacteria and, and helps reduce the swelling. Now if all of that fails we have our third line of defense and uh, here is um, an example of the third line of defense and that pretty much includes the production of antibodies. When those antibodies are, are released um, by plasma cells, um, what they'd have a very specific site uh, on their um, kind of these these two little pieces. Each one is very specific to the particular antigen that's attacking. And um, when the production is uh, triggered, then all those antibodies kind of coagulate or, or or start surrounding those bacteria and then start globbing on so that uh, macrophages can can start chomping on them. Uh, but we're going to talk more about that later and be more specific about it. Well, let's, uh, let's assume for just a moment that a bacteria, foreign matter, any kind of pathogen gets into to our body. It passes the first two lines of defense 
and, and now, of course, kind of the alarm sounds. And when it does that, it's usually the, the macrophages are the first on the scene. Uh, what they basically do, they just engulf it. They surround it and take it kind of like an amoeba. And there are kind of seven stages of um, phagocytosis that, that, take, that, that takes on. And, of course, the phagocytes will eat them. And then as they eat them, I break them apart into little bitty pieces. Uh, they're shipped off to the, the lysosome. And the lysosome is kind of like the stomach. So it's breaking all of it all up. And in those little pieces, um, in the pathogen, there's a thing called an antigen. It's a protein. And what the phagos, or excuse me, the macrophages do is they're going to take those pieces and kind of ship them out to outside of their uh, cell uh, membrane. And they kind of display them very prominently on the outside of, of the cell membrane because uh, as they're doing that, they're also sending off a chemical called interleukin-1. And that interleukin-1 is being signaled uh, for the helper T-cells to come by. And when those helper T-cells, this little kind of round, uh, a spherical thing right now is attaching itself to the outside part of a, a macrophage, the macrophage releases leukin-1 and the helper T's come on over, uh, kind of for backup, if you will. It's like saying, okay, there's invaders, we need some help, uh, more things are going on here that I can deal with, so come on out. And when, they, when the helper T cell does, it begins reading all those antigens on the outer part of the cell. So if, for instance, in my knuckle right here it is an antigen, the helper T cell c comes over here and kind of reads it. And when he reads it, um, the, these, um, the help, help, helper T cell will release some chemicals called interleukin-2. Interleukin-2 interleukin summons the cytotoxic, um, cytotoxic T cells. And when that takes place, then um, a variety of other things will be beginning to take place as well. So what happens is the helper T cell reads the ma macrophages, antigens that are on it, and, and say, all right, well, this is going to, we, we're going to ha have to call in some backup, some, some, some more soldiers, if you will. And that's when the cytotoxic uh, T cells begin to uh, start uh, doing their magic. So what a helper T cell does is it does really two things. It basically signals two different kinds of cells to get going in production. One of them, of course, is the cytotoxic T cells, but also the B cells, kind of simultaneously. So the interleukin-2 um, is the chemical signal, a signal that the, uh, the T cell sets out for it. All right, body, we need to get going on the making of some more B cells. We need to get the cytotoxic T cells also kind of on board here. So right after the interleukin-2 is released, the cytotoxic T cells begin to show up. And uh, what they do is uh, they kind of uh, uh, go out and begin reading, again, those antigens that are on the outside of the macrophage. So the, the cytotoxic T kind of has a nasty job. Uh, he goes out and finds all the cells, even the macrophages, who kind of are good guys, and they've got to destroy all them all. And they do that using uh, kind of a chemical cannon. And what it does is start shooting out these toxic, uh, toxic substances that are toxic to cell membranes and start blowing holes in them. And as it does that, of course, all the fluids and all the organelles start rushing out and it just kind of shrinks it down and, and it eventually dies. But even the macrophages, kind of their comrade in arms, are also killed during this particular time. And uh, so let, let's kind of review a little bit. Um, as you can see, kind of in the upper left-hand corner, there's a macrophage. It's engulfing and eating all of the uh, invading bacteria. And there's little triangles on there are the um, antigens that are being taken apart and then displayed on the cell membrane. And then as the T cell, the helper T cells, comes alongside and reads it, uh, it sees that, all right, this isn't one we haven't dealt with before. We're going to have to call in the big guns. So the, the helper T cells will call the cytotoxic C, but also what it does is um, it sends out signals for also another kind of cell to be made, and that's of course the B cells. So the B cells, there we go, helper T cells signals to make more of the, the B cells. So the helper T calls everybody to arms, starts a manufacturing process in the thymus, and it starts making those B cells. And when it does that, and here's, a, here's another um, kind of review slide for you, 
as you can see, the uh, macrophage is beginning to um, is still making uh, is still eating all of the invading bacteria, still displaying all of the uh, antigens. But now, what's going on is the B cells are beginning to also read it as well. Um, so what happens is the B cell begins to make these plasma cells, and the plasma cells are the things that actually make the uh, the antibodies specific for that kind of bacteria. And as it's making it, it, it has kind of on the outside edges or the kind of, if this is, if my arm right here is, a, uh, anti, uh, is an antibody and then kind of the business end of it has different shapes on it that are specific to the kind of protein or antigen that's being displayed. And then the plasma cell m makes all of these and then what happens, it attaches to the bacterias and kind of uh, coagulates it and brings it all together and then of course um, it, it will destroy any of those bacteria that have that kind of um, antigen on them. So the, the B cells uh, will make the plasma cells. Then what happens is the, the plasma cells uh, actually make the antibodies. And as, that, as they do, as you can see on this uh, diagram here, uh, those little black things that, that are there, kind of the Y-shaped things, they're the antibodies, and they will start attacking or latching on to the, um, to the bacteria or any other um, uh, pathogen that, that's there, and then, of course, engage them. Now, the great thing about that is once the plasma cells mix those, there's another B cell that's also kind of in the mix. And uh, as I said before, the third line of defense is the making of the antibodies. So we have the skin and the mucus, and the cilia, the first line of defense, the second is, uh, is the inflammatory response or anything that has to do with the white blood cells. And the third level is the antibodies that we've just kind of gone into. But there's another kind of B cell that's also made during this, this, uh, this uh, fight or struggle is the uh, memory B cells. And as this picture depicts, you can see these little kind of proteins on the outside of the cell membrane and they display the antibodies that, they're, that, that, that are made. And uh, these kind of antibodies can stay in your body for many, many years after you've been infected. For instance, chickenpox. Typically, most people only have it once. And the reason why they don't have it any more times is because these memory B cells uh, stick around for a lot of years. So that when it appears again, it's dealt with very swiftly this time. And also, it overwhelms it as well. Here is a immune response uh, chart. As you can see, in, kind of in the, in the first part here right here this is your first exposure and then of course in the second exposure whoops let's get that back during the, the second exposure right here notice that it it responds much faster and of course with many more uh, antibodies in it as well so if, if you want to take a look at uh, the, the, the different immunity systems, there are basically two divisions to it. Uh, one is what we call the cell-mediated immune uh, response system. Basically what that means is that the white blood cells are being made by other cells to kind of get with it very quickly. So the cell is responsible for creating things, uh, for instance, the macrophages, also the uh, helper T's and the B cells. And then, of course, and that takes up, to the antibody mediated response. Now here's a, a diagram that's uh, hopefully hopefully is going to be helpful. It kind of gives you an idea of like for instance and in, during the first exposure right here um, those bacteria are engulfed to the macrophages and it presents the antigen outside of the cell. Now what's going on in this at this particular level is that it's sending out some uh, anti-leukins 1 and 2 and what they do is they call in the cytotoxic T or killer cells as well as um, it's going to get this uh, interleukin 1 right here it also goes to the helper T cell which then of course starts the humoral response so over here is the humoral response and this is the cell mediated response so once uh, once the interleukin does its work, here's interleukin 2, here's interleukin 1, and uh, the helper T and the cytotoxic T are called into action. Then we have, of course, the B cell, which the interleukin 2 
was kind of um, brought together with the helper T cell. And then, of course, down here, the plasma cells are making all of these secreting antibodies. Um, but, but also, along with that, we also have memory T cells being made by the helper T cells, which sends out some more interleukin to get the, the uh, um, memory T cells moving to start actually attaching these antibodies to there. So that way we can have some memory. There's also memory uh, cytotoxic uh, cells as well as active ones. So that's a really good, uh, uh, I think, diagram that explains cell-mediated response as well as the humoral response. So you might want to ask yourself, what is an immunity? And uh, immunity basically is a resistance to a disease uh, or any other kind of causative uh, substance. And there are essentially two types. We have our active and we have the passive type of immunity. And we're going to first of all start talking about the active immunity. The active immunity is the stuff that you produce. Your body is responsible for, for that. That's going to produce the antibodies. Um, for instance, you can do that a couple of ways. Uh, you can be um, actually exposed to some kind of bacteria or pathogen or disease, and then your body by itself um, will uh, be able to make the antibodies that the antigen was, was expressing. So you actually, ask, you actually have to have the disease uh, to get these immunities and for the um, antibodies being made by you. And, or you can kind of plan your exposure to it, which means that the antigen has had the disease-causing agent removed or weakened, and then you get injected with the uh, antigen uh, um, that's been weakened um, or killed for that matter. So but it still has kind of the, some of the uh, uh, properties of it, and then you would actually get an active immunity. So, for instance, a vaccine does that sort of thing. It, it kind of likes you to, all right, I'm going to plan on getting uh, vaccinated. That will give me the immunity. So the antigens are deliberately put in you, injected into you, um, but they've somehow been denatured or inactive or uh, somehow uh, changed so that your body actually doesn't get the disease. Um, and, and then, of course, uh, after, after a while, of course, uh, you would become um, immune to, to that particular disease. And sometimes you'll need booster shots and others to keep your immunities up. Kind of depends on the disease. But small park, pox, chicken pox, and, and things like that, polio, are really, are really good success stories as far as um, why vaccinations have worked so well. There's another one is a passive immunity, and you don't have to produce it. Typically, you get it by uh, mother passes uh, on uh, to their babies, uh, either with colostrum or, or through, that's, uh, through the mother's milk or through pregnancy through um, the placenta. And um, these particular antibodies protect usually the child for a short amount of time. And then, of course, you have to have um, some kind of vaccination program. Well, I hope this has proven helpful for you and hope will provide the necessary review so uh, you can not only build your model, but also you'll do uh, extremely well not only in the tests, but also you have some sense of why, why um, vaccinations are extremely important. So uh, we hope to see you out in the lab here in just a few minutes, and um, uh, we can kind of continue with, uh, with the activities. All right, see you later. Thanks. Bye.